What's up guys, your Doomsday here, and today what we're going to be doing is talking about all the new hero and item balance changes in update 3.10 patch notes. So if you guys didn't see, I made a part 1 of the patch notes where I discussed the meta and general changes, and this is going to change the way that you play both 3v3 and 5v5 completely. So with this video, let's try to hit 1600 subs and 300 likes. Keep in mind now that without ambient gold in the jungle, it's going to make it so that the bot lane and jungler are not always together, but instead they're going to be separated and there's going to be more 1v1s since the jungler will be by himself in the jungle, so every lane is going to be more like a 1v1. So this can cause new heroes that excel more at 1v1s to jump back into the meta. Well with that, let's get right into the changes, and first off let's start with Anka. And again, she's going to get nerfed. The damage on Anka on her A ability, it's not a huge nerf since her main damage does not come from hitting the A ability. The main nerf is the movement speed from 3 to 2, and the damage nerf on the part when she blinks. They also give a small damage nerf to the B ability, but they increase the crystal power ratio. So throughout this video, there's going to be a lot of talk about an ability's base damage and the weapon power and CP ratios. All that the base damage is, is just the damage that an ability will deal with no items at all. And the weapon power and CP ratio show how much extra damage an ability will do with weapon power or CP items. So for example, if a CP ratio is 30%, you could just multiply the 30% by the amount of CP damage that you have to figure out the extra damage that you can add onto the base. So the larger that the ratio is, the more damage that the weapon power or crystal power items will add. So back to Anka, the ultimate also got nerfed and now the cooldown is even longer. In my opinion, I don't think this is going to make it so you have to ban Anka every single time and I don't think the Anka is going to be a huge threat unless the Anka is fed. Because without as much mobility or damage, it's going to make it so you actually have to use your abilities at the right time and make sure you're, you use your ultimate to dodge stuns now, which is even more important since with the movement speed nerf, it's going to be way easier for people to land stuns on you whenever you dive on in, which is why only higher skilled players are going to be able to play them effectively, mostly. So that's about it for Anka, now we can move on to Arden, who's getting a huge change. So pretty much the change to Arden kills weapon power Arden. It's not going to be a thing anymore, I'm pretty sure. But it buffs utility Arden so much. The first change is to his perk. Normally whenever you basic attack, for each basic attack that you land, you get 15% vengeance back. Which is what allows you to get your B ability up so much since you need max vengeance to use it. But with this change, now you only get 5% vengeance per basic attack, and that makes it so it's so much harder to get your B ability up so often. So now for his A ability Vanguard, they changed it so now whenever you Vanguard yourself, you actually do not gain more vengeance. And this hurts Weapon Power Arden, since whenever you play Weapon Power Arden, most people would use their B ability to engage, and then self vanguard themselves, and that cuts off almost half the cooldown of your B ability because it gives you a lot of vengeance gain. But now, without this vengeance gain, it's gonna make it so much harder to get your B ability back up off cooldown. But on overdrive for this ability, there is vengeance gain increase if you use it on an ally. So that's more of helping utility Arden, and also the cooldown is gonna be reduced by a little bit which again benefits utility Arden mostly. And the range decreases from 8 to 7 in early game, but once you overdrive it it goes back to a normal 9 tiles that it used to be. But now onto Arden's B ability, Blood for Blood. The base damage on this ability is actually going to increase, which helps Captain Arden so much, since as Captain Arden you don't build items, or at least you don't build damage items. But since the ability's base damage is higher now, you're actually going to deal more damage, which allows you to pressure 
enemy laners even more. Since as Captain Orton, your B ability already did an insane amount of damage, but now that the base damage is increased, you could deal even more. And on Overdrive, the bonus for this damage actually goes down from 40% to 15%, so now you don't deal anywhere nearly as much damage for upgrading this ability to max. But the cooldown is actually going to be reduced by a good amount. And also now on Overdrive, there is not a range bonus, and it stays at 7 tiles instead of 9 tiles. And this is huge because now you have to get closer to the enemy to start and engage as Weapon Power Arden, and you can't use your B ability to jump over walls. Because if you did not know, you could actually use your B ability with a 9 tile radius to get over walls like the Black Claw Pit and Ghost Wing Pits and get to safe areas. But now, moving on to Arden's ultimate, it had its cooldown shortly reduced, and now the duration of it will always be 6 seconds instead of you needing to upgrade it to increase the duration. But now, upgrading the ability will actually increase the amount of time that the enemy is stunned instead. With all these changes, I'm pretty sure that Weapon Power Arden is going to end up dying, just because of how hard it is to get enough vengeance now to use your B ability multiple times in a fight. And also, the range nerf on the B ability hurts him a lot. However, I believe that Captain Arden, and especially Stormcrown Arden this patch, I think it will be meta, because of the increase to base damage of the B ability, and that's going to allow them to play super aggressive early game, and they'll be able to do good amounts of damage even without weapon power items. And also, the buffs to the Vanguard and Gauntlet cooldown, and the increased stun duration will make Utility Arden so much more effective. Up next, we actually have one of the two weapon power carries that are getting buffed, and it's going to be Baron, and he has some of the more interesting changes for this update. So for this patch, Baron is actually going to get a huge buff, and it's not just going to be a small one. First off, this was long needed, but his movement speed is now increased to 3.3, so he's actually not going to be the slowest hero in the game anymore. And he's going to even be faster than Finn now, which he really needed. And they also increased the damage that a basic attack does, and the damage that the splash damage does with the weapon power ratios. So for Baron's B ability jump jets, they also changed it so that the base movement speed is now less, but it scales with weapon power. Pretty much this means that you need to get more weapon power to increase the movement speed that you get from this. And if you want to know how to calculate how much speed you can get, all that you have to do is, let's say you have two Sorrow Blades, and that's 240 weapon power. You just take 240 and multiply it by the 0.3% that the weapon power ratio is, and then you get how much that is and add it onto the base speed. And if you do the math, you're going to realize that's almost impossible to get more movement speed than before. So in conclusion, the movement speed that's provided now is actually a little bit less. So now for the ultimate, if you did not know, upgrading it increases the range of your basic attacks, but now they're going to actually decrease the extra range, so it's not going to be as large. I think the Baron can still be super strong next patch, but only if it's played into the right comps. Since he's a late game monster, but he struggles really badly early game, but he has insane burst potentials with this perk and his B ability double shot. So up next now, we have a small nerf to flicker, it's not going to be a big one, but the damage from his A ability will actually decrease unless you build a lot of CP power, which normally you don't do. But the B ability fairy dust is also going to do less damage now too. And I believe that for this patch, for utility junglers to even somewhat work, they're not going to have any choice but to build Stormcrown. Since with Ambient Gold being taken out, junglers are going to have to clear the jungle by themselves without a bot laner, so they're actually going to need to be able to do damage. And without a Stormcrown, utility junglers will not have any jungle clear speed, and it's going to take them forever to clear the jungle. So now we're going to be moving on to Fortress, who also got some minor changes. In the past, 
if you have not played Fortress and you do not know, you could actually use your A ability and mark the enemy without leaping onto a target. So then your team could get the movement speed buff, but you didn't even dive in. But now they're actually going to change this. So you have to dive on the target first, and then your team gets the extra movement speed. The cooldown for this is going to be lowered in early game. So he won't be as weak since he struggles in the early game, but in late game he's a team fighting monster. And the damage is also going to be slightly increased. But like Flicker in this new update, I do not think that he will work in the jungle unless you use Storm Crown, since his jungle clear is also so slow. But there is a very small possibility that he could actually be playing the captain role, since some people have been saying that dive comps are going to be the next thing in this update. But we can't be sure yet, we're just going to have to wait and see how this next update plays out. And up next. We're going to have the second weapon power carry that's going to be getting the buff. And lately, Gwen has been falling out of the meta. Just because of how effective other bot laners have been, and the other bot laners kit, I believe that these buffs with Gwen, and the nerfs of other strong bot laners, might bring Gwen back into the meta. First off, they're buffing her A ability by reducing the cooldown slightly, decreasing the enemy decreasing the energy which is used which i think is actually a huge thing since gwen always has energy problems whenever i play her and a small increase in her damage the cp ratio is nerfed but i don't think that this really matters since there's no way that cp gwen will be meta just because cp gwen straight up can't output as much damage as other crystal power carries can now gwen's b ability had the cooldown shortened, but more energy is needed to use it now. And I hope that through the buff of the healing treant, since now it gives more energy, I think that'll make it so Gwen will not have as much energy problems, and that she won't run out so quickly, since now the healing treant can actually give back more energy. And now for her ultimate, the range was increased by a couple of tiles, so now you can use it from afar, like before when her range was huge. And upgrading your ultimate now will actually increase the stun duration. However, I'm pretty sure that the most effective thing is going to be to max your A and B ability still. But moving on to Idris. There's so many changes for Idris. First off, they made it so that when Idris has his ranged attack, it'll use more crystal power now and it will not have any weapon power ratio at all. What this effectively does is kill hybrid Idris. It is not going to be viable anymore. Just because in the past, with hybrid Idris, normally you build a Sorrow Blade or Serpent's Mouth so you can get both perks after you build Dragon's Eye and Alternate and Current, and your ranged basic attacks would actually do weapon power damage too. But now, it'll do zero weapon power damage. So it'll be a huge waste to get a Sorrow Blade or a Serpent's Mask if your ranged basic attacks don't even do weapon power damage, and you'll only deal damage on melee attacks. So, for the A ability, they changed it now to try to encourage people to overdrive it, since now, you only get 20% extra damage after you use it, unless you max it out, when you'll get 40%. So, the size of this barrier was also decreased, and the duration of it gets lowered, too. Now, Idris will have to avoid damage for 7 seconds, instead of 4.5 seconds like in the past to get the barrier. And this amount of time that you need to avoid damage is going to decrease the more weapon power that you have. So... Now for the B ability Chakram, it was just slightly nerfed and the cooldown's a little bit longer in the early game, and you gain less stamina whenever you land it, and it also does a little bit less damage too for both crystal power and weapon power packs. So with the new changes to the ultimate, the cooldown's actually going to get longer, but now I think that this means that it does damage over time, 
And now this ability will deal CP damage too. In the past, this ability has only had a weapon power ratio, so if you're building CP, there's no reason at all to upgrade this ability. But now it will actually do something. And the normal damage is actually going to get heavily nerfed. And the effect of weapon power items on a 2 is going to get nerfed. So in this update, there's going to be a heavy focusing on 1v1s in lane. And I do believe that Idris can still be strong. Just because Idris excels in 1v1s in lanes as both weapon power and crystal power roots. So now moving on to Jewel. First off, they decrease the damage that her A ability, Rocket Leap, will do if you build crystal power. And I think that this is unnecessary. And then for the B ability, they change it so that it does not have any pierce and it cannot crit. I think that this is absurd. I do not think that weapon power Jewel was even strong in the last patch. And now they took away two huge things that were the only things that even could keep Weapon Power Jewel relevant. But at least they did up the base damage and the Weapon Power Ratio and CP Ratio. And for the ultimate, they increased the CP Ratio on the ultimate up to 240%, which they really needed to do since they took it down from 350% to 200% last update. But I do not think that Weapon Power Jewel is viable with no pierce, and the fact that you can't crit makes it so you can't even buy a tornado trigger or a tyrant's monocle, since you won't get the same effect as you would in the past, because you would actually be able to crit. However, I do think that CP Jewel can be viable again. I think with the buffs that she got to her B and her ultimate, it can actually be used. So now onto Kinetic, who is by far, without a question, the most broken weapon power bot laner last patch and all they did to her was heavily nerf her passive weapon power ratio they took it from 10 to 6.25 percent so all this does is make her perk deal way less damage which is necessary for sure since she was dealing absurd damage last patch but i do not think this is that this is going to be enough to kill off kinetic I still think that Kinetic's kit is so good, and it's still going to be used a decent amount of this patch, in my opinion. And they changed up Koshka a bit now. First, what they did was they made it so whenever Koshka uses her A ability, it will also auto attack. This means that if you use your B ability and you get the two empowered attacks, you could just auto attack once and then use your A ability and it will automatically use your second empowered attack. Or if your weapon power for some reason, it could do a critical hit. However, they actually nerfed the bonus damage on it and the cooldown for it. So for Koshka's B ability Twirly Death, they actually added a weapon power ratio. So now if you build weapon power items on Koshka, it'll actually do more damage on your B ability. It seems that they're trying to make weapon power Koshka a thing, but I do not think that Koshka can work as weapon power, just because it does not have enough burst damage to be effective. Since Koshka is too squishy to stay in fights for an extended amount of time, she needs to get in there, use her abilities, burst the enemies down, and then get out and wait for her abilities to get back off cooldown. And as weapon power, you just don't have that kind of burst in my opinion. But Finally, we can move on to Lorelei now. She finally received the nerf that she's been needing. So first off, they decrease the amount of damage that she does per basic attack by lowering the CP ratio. And now on your A ability, they made us all take just a little bit longer for the stun to actually hit the enemy. So for the B ability, they made it longer and also the slow is a little bit weaker. Also. For her ultimate, the cooldown is going to be longer again. And I think that Lorelei can still be picked in certain circumstances, especially in the captain position. But honestly, I think that Lorelei is going to get outshadowed by next hero, which is going to be Lyra. To be honest, I already thought that Lyra was such an underrated and such a good captain last patch. And now that's getting a buff, 
I believe that it might even contend to be a top 3 roamer for this patch. And, and all the abilities, what they do is nerf the CP ratio, pretty much meaning that CP Lyra is dead and useless, and it's probably not going to be played. But there are so many buffs for Captain Lyra. First off, the cooldown for A ability Imperial Sigil is going to be shorter in the early game, and this can help out loads since she was already so strong in the laning phase by being able to heal up her teammates. And now that she can get her A ability off cooldown even more, there's going to be insane pressure in the lane, since their mid laner or your, whoever you're with is just never going to die. But eventually the cooldown will end up a little bit longer in the late game once you overdrive it. And even though the heal was decreased, they actually increased the health ratio so the more health items that you have, you'll get an even bigger bonus, which is going to even out to the loss of the heal. And whenever you close the sigil, the health ratio is actually going to go way up to 15%. So for Lyra's B ability, Bright Bulwark, the slow is going to be insane now late game, and most people will almost guarantee to max their B on lore, um. Lyra Captain, just because the slow goes from 1.5 to 2.5, and the cooldown is decreased and the damage is increased. Think about the movement speed of Baron and how that is 3.3. Imagine being slowed down by 2.5 movement speed. That means that Baron is moving at a speed of 0.8. That pretty much means that he's barely moving at all, which is insane to think about. But the cooldown for Lyra's ultimate was increased, and the range is a little bit shorter, meaning that you have to use it wisely and you can't just spam it whenever you want anymore. In my opinion though, I still believe that Lyra will be a top tier captain this patch. So up next, we have the most controversial change in this update. Magnus is receiving a small buff. His A ability is actually going to deal more damage now, but his ultimate is going to receive a small nerf. Overall though, I think that this will keep Magnus about where he was in the last patch in damage. The reason I think that the small buff happened was because lower tier players were not able to play Magnus since he's a higher skill tier hero and it must have seemed really weak for them. But in higher tiers, Magnus can actually put an in insane work and deal some damage like crazy, and I can almost guarantee you that Magnus is going to be banned in almost every single match. So now that we finished with Magnus, we can move on to Malin, who's receiving a small buff. Not a small buff, what am I talking about? This is going to be a big buff. So ever since the range nerf that Malin received a few patches ago, She's been falling out of the meta and she's not been used as much. So what they're going to be doing is decreasing the damage from her light form A ability, but they're going to increase the root duration for it. And then for the A ability dark form, shadow tendrils, they're going to be increasing the damage. And then the light form B ability, it's actually be getting a buff to the barrier and the movement speed that Malin gets is actually going to be increased. So now for the dark form B ability, all it's going to be doing is getting a small cooldown reduction. So from the looks of this, it seems like what they're trying to do is make it so Malin can do as much damage as the other CP carries, while at the same time trying to stay stay safe. Just because of Malin's short range, she's going to have to use her abilities at the correct times and use them to dodge other things. So Malina is also another hero that stands out to me in 1v1s, so I would not be surprised at all if we see her back this patch. So up next, we have Rhyme, and he was greatly changed. His perk, Frost Guard, is no longer going to chill enemies, and he gets more fortified health now, and he can have twice as much fortified health held at once. From 20 to 40% of his health can be fortified. And now his A ability Winter Spire 
will no longer deal increased damage to enemies that are chilled. And also the damage for this ability has been greatly increased by a lot. And then the B ability Chill Winds no longer requires enemies to be chilled for it to root. It seems like SCMC is finally trying to change Rhyme to make him fit into 5v5 more. They took out the entire concept of chilling enemies and just made it so he can have more fortified health to make him way more tanky and they also gave him a reliable form as CC with the root on his B ability since now you don't need enemies to be chilled to actually root them so it'll be easier to use. And I'm going to be interested to seeing how Rhyme will perform in both 5v5 and whether if these changes will make Rhyme broken in 3v3. This update, SCMC has changed Reza dramatically. For his perk Firestarter, they greatly decrease the damage that it does, but they increase the CP ratio by so much. And for his A ability Scorcher, they decrease the cooldown of it, but they also decrease the damage and the CP ratio. And for his B ability Troublemaker, the cooldown and charge time were both reduced, and the damage was slightly increased. But the CP ratio decreased. And then for the empowered attack after you use your B ability, both the damage and the CP ratio were decreased. And finally for your ultimate, the cooldown's even longer now, and the damage is slightly decreased, but the CP ratio is increased to try to even it out. And for the fortified health now, it has zero base fortified health and you only get a CP ratio, M meaning that if you don't buy CP items, then you won't get any fortified health at all. But now this empowered form lasts for 10 seconds, and with all the changes to the base damage and the ratios and everything for Reza, it's kind of unclear on what the best build is going to be for Reza, and probably somebody's going to have to do some math to calculate it or just figure out in a match which one is more effective. So up next, there's actually a small change to Saw. First off, his B ability, Suppressing Fire, gains the stacks over time now, instead of instantly. So in the past, what you could do, is you could just use the B ability, and then you'll have 10 stacks immediately. But now, I think what it means is that it's going to increase one by one for the stacks as you use your B ability. And then the ultimate ability actually got a rework. So now it's going to send out a shell that has both weapon power and a CP ratio. And it's going to explode and do splash damage to all the enemies around him. And now finally for the next weapon power bot laner, we have Silvernail getting a nerf too. So the damage on Silvernail's basic attack is going to get lowered from 132 to 120. Meaning that now he's just going to straight up do less damage with his basic attacks in general. And now his double shot will always fire the extra bolt, and you do not have to stand still for that extra like half second for it to go through. And his A ability was also changed, so that now the cooldown is shorter, but the slow that it provides stays the same at 35% and does not scale up, no matter how much you upgrade the ability. So I still think that Silvernail is going to be the best hero to pick against dive comps, just because he's so good at countering dive, and he wasn't even nerfed too heavily, just as damage was decreased a little bit, but his kit is still so good. So finally, hopefully now with this change we just will not have to deal with Scarf anymore. They actually buffed the damage on Scarf's perk, since nobody ever utilized it. Cause you would put yourself in jeopardy by getting close enough to auto attack an enemy. So they're trying to make it so it'll be worth it to get that close. And now for Scarf's A ability Spitfire, the cooldown and energy needed are going to increase, and the damage and the CP ratios are going to decrease, while the range increases. So for the goop on the B ability, the energy cost is going to decrease and the base damage is going to almost double, but the CP ratio decreases. And actually the burn now does less damage and has a lower CP ratio. 
So all that all of this means is that you could use your A ability for a further range and be more safe, but in my opinion, I think this is weird. Since from the looks of it, they're trying to make it so your perk is actually useful. And to use your perk, you have to be up close to the enemy. But if you increase the range on the A ability, won't people just play from further away? And now, I think that the goop is going to be more important just to make sure that you set it on fire when the enemy is on it. And it doesn't even matter if the enemy just walks right off, because now the burst damage that you get whenever you ignite it is huge. So, for the ultimate, the shield pierce and the fortified health were both removed. But the damage and the CP ratio got increased by so much. I do think that Scarf can still be used, just because of all the damage that she could put out, and how you can actually play her from an even safer range now. But moving on to next hero, there's actually some huge buffs to Taka. So first off, his perk, which I do not know how to pronounce that, House Kamua, I probably bombed that, but the cooldown reduction per stack is going to be cut in half from 10 to 5%. And the perk charge time is going to decrease the more that you level it up, and it's going to end at 0.5 seconds instead of the 1 second that it was before. So then Taka's A ability Kaiten has this cooldown pretty much cut in half now. And taking the overdrive not only makes it take no energy, but the cooldown is down to 7.5 seconds, meaning that now you can use it so much more often and you could deal the countless abilities that are coming your way. And his B ability sadly will not heal you anymore, but it takes less energy and it gives huge movement speed buffs whenever using this, if you upgrade this ability a few times. And in my opinion, I would think that if you kept the healing on this ability, Taka would become meta again, but instead they take it off. And now for his ultimate X Retsu, the cooldown is very long right when you first unlock it now, but it's going to decrease dramatically whenever you upgrade this. And the weapon power ratio has also decreased. Even though I feel like Taka can be more viable now, since you have your abilities up so much, I do not think that Taka still has the burst or the sustain that other promising assassins like Anka and Reza have. So, for our last hero, we have a nerf to Vox. The perk Julia's Song is changed now so that the bounces deal way less CP damage, since the bounces used to do insane damage. And also, the A ability Sonic Zoom has a shorter cooldown, but the two attacks that are given off actually deal less damage now, and they take up more energy. And this means now that you can't just spam this ability so much, or else you're going to run out of energy if you use it all the time. And it's going to be bad if you run out of energy, so instead you're going to be super immobile. But for the ultimate wait for it, they made it so that the cooldown was even longer, but the burst damage and the CP ratios for these have increased greatly. So now it can deal off even more damage than before, and the silence can increase as you upgrade this ability. Or the duration of the silence can increase. You didn't get that well that's going to be about it for the individual hero changes and now we can move on to item changes so first off we're gonna have a small decrease in the price of an atlas poltron as and as i've said before in my last video i believe where we talk about the meta and general changes with the ambient gold being reduced in lane the captain's gonna have less gold in general so to balance this out what SCMC did was they made all the captain items cheaper, so every single captain item is going to be way cheaper now. So next, there's going to be an increase in the price of bone salt. The weapon power is going to decrease for bone salt, but the attack speed and armor pierce are actually going to increase by a little bit. And I think that bone salt is still going to be used in so many builds just because it's such a strong item still. 
and it didn't even really get nerfed or buffed because it got an attack speed buff and it also got a pierce buff. So Mo Broken Myth is also changing kind of like Bonesaw and it's going to be getting an increase in the price to buy it and also the amount of pierce is going to increase too. So Capacitor Plate and Crucible are both getting a decrease in price since they're captain items. But Crucible's also getting a small health nerf too, so now it won't make you as tanky. And the Dragon Heart, Founder of Renewal, and Oak Heart are all also getting a small decrease in price. So up next, we're going to be talking about Pulse Wave, which is also going to be getting a reduction in price. But the passive burn on it is going to increase in damage. But it's no longer going to damage structures. And in my opinion, I believe that Pulse Wave is going to be super meta again. And if utility heroes are still used next patch, I think that Pulse Wave is going to be built on almost all of them. Since it's pretty much back to how it was a couple patches ago when Pulse Wave was broken. So now, the Reflex Block is also going to get a small nerf in health too, just like Crucible, and the Rook's Decree is going to get a small decrease in price. So Spellfire is going to get changed a little bit too. So now it's going to be more expensive and the base damage is less, but the CP ratio has increased. So what this does is make Spellfire a worse first item to buy, since now you need more CP items for Spellfire to do damage. Since the base damage is lower, and it relies on the CP ratio and the crystal power that you have to do more damage. So you need more crystal power to do more damage with the Spellfire. But now we're going to be looking at Stormcrown, which had an interesting change in my opinion. It's actually going to be stronger early game. And then once it reaches late game, it's going to be the same as before. And it used to be so... Stormcrown was only less effective against heroes, but now it's actually less effective against anything that is not a jungle monster. And yes, this includes turrets and minions too. And now it's only effective on jungle monsters and objectives. But this buff at level 1 is meant so junglers are going to be able to clear their jungle even faster now, because they're going to be taking it by themselves. So. Along with the Storm Crown change, Storm Guard was also changed similarly, but the health was decreased and the damage was buffed to help junglers clear fast at the beginning of matches. I think that Storm Guard is going to be bought by most junglers at level 1 to help them clear out their jungle. And lastly, we got Tension Bow, which also received a small buff, but the cost is a little bit higher and the proc damage and the armor pierce are going to increase. Well that's going to be about it for this video, and all the changes for update 3.10, and all the individual hero changes and the item changes. And thanks for watching, remember let's try to hit 1600 subs and 300 likes with this video, and if you all haven't seen part 1 where we go over the general and meta changes, make sure to check it out, and see you guys next time.